working left to right, the needle always enters the mesh from behind. Right to left, it enters from in front. Left-handers perform the mirror image of right-handed stitches. A description of left-handed sewing is presented at the end of this videotape. Hold the needle like this at the back and never turn it around. Handle the needle with your working hand only. Switching hands waste time and you need the other hand to control the twine. Watch the needle again in slow motion. There are six basic stitches, as well as starting and ending knots. We're going to start with a trawl web. There are some different techniques used with gill net, and we'll cover those later. Now let's learn the basic stitches. They'll enable us to sew in any direction. Once we can do that, mending is simply a matter of restoring the original mesh grid by moving from side to side and from top to bottom. First, we need to learn the starting knot. Starting on a three bar, sew it like this. Before tightening the knot, make one more pass like this. The result is a double sheet bend. Let's watch it again in slow motion. And in real time. To make pickups above going right, start at the left. Holding the twine with your left hand, pass the needle through the pickup. Now control the shape of the mesh with three fingers, leaving your thumb and forefinger free. Pinch the bars together and form a loop. Pass the needle behind the pickup and through the loop. Snug the twine by pulling against the needle and snap to set the knot. When you set the knot, snap the twine against the back of the needle. If you snap it against the front, you'll unravel too much twine. The knot you've created is called a sheet bend. Now let's watch it again in slow motion. Pass the needle through the pickup from behind. Pinch and raise the needle to form a loop. Pass the needle behind the pickup and through the loop. Pull down to tighten the knot and snap. Here it is in real time. The procedure is exactly the same even though these pickups haven't been cleaned. Making each knot creates a new mesh. Remember, maintaining consistent mesh size and shape is the key to good net repair. So you need to measure as you make each knot. If the meshes are too large to measure with your hand, use an existing bar. Here's another look at the pickup above going right. Hold the twine like this and insert the needle from the front. The result is the same sheet bend you created when you were working left to right. Now let's watch it again in slow motion. Pinch the bars with your thumb and forefinger, raise the needle to form the loop, 
Pass the needle behind the pickup and through the loop, draw it tight, release the pinch, and snap. Here it is in real time. Start at the lower left and come through from behind. Pinch the pickup against the twine. Pass the needle behind the pickup to form the hitch. Draw it tight and set the knot by snapping up. Once again, you've created a sheet bend. Here it is in slow motion. Use two fingers to grasp the twine and pull it to the side so it forms a loop. And again. Insert the needle from the front. Adjust the length to use two fingers to pull the twine to the side to form the loop. Draw it tight with an upward motion and snap. You've created another sheet bend. Let's watch it again in slow motion. Pinch with your thumb on top, adjust the length, and use two fingers to pull the twine to the side to form the loop. Pass the needle behind the pickup and through the loop. Draw it tight with an upward motion, release the pinch, and snap. And again. Pull the twine to the left and bring the needle under the cider to make a hitch. Draw the hitch tight and pinch it in place. Treat this resulting three bar as if it were a pickup. Here's the knot you've created. Now let's watch it again in slow motion. Pull the twine to the left and bring the needle under the cider to make a hitch. Pinch, form a loop. Pass the needle behind both bars and through the loop. And again. Pull the twine to the left and make a hitch under the cider like this. Pinch and twist as you raise the needle to form a loop. Now, sew it like a pickup. Set the knot by snapping downward. Here's a close look at the finished cider. Let's watch it again in slow motion. Net mending is like solving a puzzle. You always start at the top and work side to side to the bottom. Mending starts and ends on three bars. Before you start to sew, you've got to trim the hole so there's one three bar on the top and one three bar on the bottom. Every other knot around the perimeter of the hole must be a pickup or a cider. Choose a starting three bar at the top. If there isn't a starting three bar where you want it, cut one in. It can be on either the left or right sides. Work around one side of the hole, one mesh at a time, until you encounter a three bar. This three bar will become either a pickup or a cider. Stop and think which cut will eliminate the three bar without creating another three bar nearer the start. If you create another one further away from the start, that's okay. Stop when you reach the bottom of the hole. If there's a three bar, leave it. You can end on that one. If there isn't a three bar, don't worry. When you finish trimming down the other side, there will be one at the bottom to end on. Return to the top and work down the other side in the same manner. 
Leave your starting three bar intact and work one mesh at a time, trimming the three bars to pickups or siders. If you have done it correctly, there will be one three bar left at the bottom of the hole. Here are some tips that should help you trim. Anytime there are two three bars together, cutting the common bar removes them both. If you come to a one bar knot, cut it off. If you see two three bars like this, cutting here and here creates a pair of pickups. Now watch the trimming sequence again. Work around one side, trimming out the three bars. The rule is to chase the three bars down the hole. Trim all the way down one side until you reach the bottom. Return to the top. Leave your three bar intact and chase the three bars down the other side. There must be a single three bar at the bottom to accept your ending knot. On large holes, trim as you work, rather than trimming the entire hole at once. 